when Stephanie and I were the co-stewards of the PSM course, what were our core drivers behind curriculum development? At scrum.org, all of our courses can type, trace their genesis back to the original trainings shared by Ken Schwaber. So when Ken, Ken founded scrum.org, he wanted it rooted in a deep experience of understanding. The Scrum Master course I'm particularly passionate about because it was often seen as the foundational course. There's now the Applying Professional Scrum, which is more experiential. But historically, uh, the Professional Scrum Master course was the entry-level course, which it, it's now advanced, like times have changed. So what were we doing as stewards? And there were three aspects to it. The first aspect is thought leadership, working with Ken and the scrum.org staff to think about the next direction that we could take the course. It had been previously uh, looked after and improved to a high level by Hunter Verheyen when he was working with scrum.org. And when he moved on, there was an opportunity to look after the courses and take it in another direction. Scrum.org realized they had this awesome potential with the PST community, and I was lucky enough to work with Stephanie on this course. So that's first point, thought leadership, working with Ken and the Scrum.org team to shape the direction. The second aspect was dealing with the feedback from the people who were delivering the course. And so we would work with the professional scrum trainer community to garner their feedback to see how the course could be improved. The PSM is a challenging course to deliver. There's rich content and powerful exercises in there to challenge the mindset and approach. The third thing is to tie it to the core purpose of scrum.org, which is to help people and teams succeed in delivering value in complex environments using Scrum. So when you brought that all together, we had that challenging space to occupy of trying to keep our stakeholders happy, happy, building the course into a more powerful experience and editing, removing, updating content. I think it's fair to say that not one word of that course was built without Stephanie and I really exploring how each word measured and made impact. Now, this was pre-COVID times. And at that time, the scrum.org policy was that all courses must be held in person. And so that gave you more time and space and a better opportunity to explore things. Now that time's moved on, Scrum.org are using different models to look after the course. But when I was a steward, that's what we we're looking at doing. I am curious to know how other organizations maintain consistency of their courseware, because that is a really unique selling point of Scrum.org. Uh, 